A tweet just came in, check this out, from Oklahoma City Public Schools account in response to Skip picking the Warriors to beat the Thunder in the conference finals. I have a feeling you had very good grades. Oklahoma City Public Schools saying, hey, at ESPN, please remind real Skip Bayless that we taught him better than this. Mm. Hashtag Thunder, hashtag NBA Playoffs. Yeah. Skip, they yeah. taught you better than this. Come they on. did, and I, I was honored they put me in their, whatever it's called, Hall of Fame. But my mama taught me to be <laughs> honest, and I'm just being honest. I think Golden State is much better than the Thunder, as we saw in those three games. I'm sorry, OKC, but I love you. <laughs> my only response to the folks at OKC and the public schools, Skip loves y'all very, very much. He meant no offense whatsoever, but I do feel your pain. What you're experiencing right now is what I've been experiencing every day for three years. <laughs> I've tried to teach him mm -hmm. over and over and over again, and he never learns. And, and I have to say this one more time just to drive home this point. I was a big Spurs fan, just the way I was a Cowboys fan, long before Oklahoma City ever mm. dreamed of having anything but a college basketball team at, in Norman, Oklahoma, in Stillwater, Oklahoma. It was shocking to me that the Thunder arrived in Oklahoma City but I'm not a bandwagon jumper. I'm just not going to jump off my team onto that bandwagon just because it happens to be in my hometown. But I love my hometown, and I will be there in July, as I always am. And I'll see you then. Love it. And I do love to talk trash to you about mm -hmm. that, though, that you're not an Oklahoma City fan. Well, but Go Chipmunks. That's your elementary school, right? Mayfair Chipmunks. Yeah, yep. <laughs> Mayfair Chipmunks. That's elementary, but Northwest Class and Knights High School. Way to go. Yeah, way to go. All yeah. right, we love this tweet. This is great. <laughs> Speaking of your team, Skip, let's get into it. So Manu and Tim Duncan were non-committal last night about their future in terms of if they'll play again. Do you think they should retire? Stephen A., this is a tough question because I, the, I, I'm speaking from my perspective. I have no idea what's in their heart. If they feel like they're finished, if they just don't want to do this anymore, God bless them. You know how we both feel like that. That's just whatever a man wants to do. If he's had enough, he should go home and rest on his laurels. And these guys have a lot of laurels to rest on, both of them. But this is my two cents from a distance. I wouldn't retire. I don't see any reason they should retire. I thought both of them didn't have just good years. They had very good years. Now, we're all prisoners of what we saw the last couple of nights. Tim Duncan's got two bad knees. If, if he's going to play again, and he has an option to play next year for a mere $6.4 million, I'm pretty sure he's going to have to get one of his knees fixed. But Stephen A., for, forgive me for, for reaching for what you might dismiss as obscure, geeky, second-level stats. But you know the one that, that a lot of the experts hang their hats on, real plus minus? Again, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to sell it to you. I'm just giving you what, what I've read in these stories about what Tim Duncan did this year. In real plus minus on defense, this year during the regular season, Tim Duncan was second in the NBA. I kept telling you, he's still as good a rim protector as I see from night to night. And I watched Tim Duncan. I don't know if they played 82 games. I probably saw 70 of those games to be conservative. And in, in overall real plus minus, Tim Duncan was the highest spur. And going into last night's playoff game in this series, he led both teams in real plus minus. It's a little obscure. It's a little complex. I don't want to get into it here, but it's second level showing his overall true impact on the basketball game. Now let's go to Manu. Has a, a player option to come back next year at $2.9 million. Chicken feed by the standards that he set this year at age 38. He was really good. He was the closer for this team all through the regular season. I trusted him, and then he failed me, obviously, uh, certainly in game two at home of this Thunder series. But in real plus minus throughout the whole regular season, for over 82 games, Manu Ginobili was second among shooting guards in the NBA. Wow. So over, if, if you just do it per 36 minutes because he didn't play 36 minutes a game, Manu averaged 17.6 points on 50% shooting from the field and 40% from three. It's, it's pretty good. It's good enough to be a, a viable component of a team that won 67 games. So to me, 
I would be fine. They, they make so little money, they probably make even less if you ask them to next year. If they want to come back, they deserve to come back. And I, as a fan, would welcome them back because I think they would be very valuable components to what will be, uh, once again, a very good team next year. I think you're missing the point, and I think you're trying to change the narrative. When you look at the San Antonio Spurs, first of all, I mean, okay, Mr. Captain, obvious. Of course, if they want to come back, you should let them come back. Of course, they're a ball well, that's not obvious. based on the experience. And yes, it is obvious. It's very obvious because the, if their ability to school and tutor a younger generation of players is in itself valuable at $6 million, at $2.9 million in today's NBA economy where Anthony Davis signed for $145 million, where the cap is going up to over to $92 million, where it's expected to go up to a jump to one hundred and eight to one hundred and nine million million next summer after this coming one? I mean, come on now. These are peanuts compared to what the kind of money that's out there and, more importantly, the kind of money that some of the stars demand. It's not about that. Of course you know that Tim Duncan and Manu Ginobili has a place with Spurs. They could be there the next several years based on what they did this year. Tim Duncan averaging 25 minutes. Manu Ginobili averaging 19 minutes. Both of them not averaging in double digits and points, but nevertheless still shot 48 and 45% from the, from the field, respectively. They are more than capable of making a contribution, not to mention their presence, their veteran presence inside a Spurs locker room where you don't want to deal with the uh, the potentially acerbic Greg Popovich. Not that that would be the case because I can't imagine, but I'm just saying to you, of course there's value in those two. Nobody's questioning that. What you're saying is the people that we watched win one championship after another, religiously win 50-plus games in a season, those guys are gone. They're no longer who they once were. Usually when that happens, we talk about guys retiring. Why, Skip? Because of practice, because of travel, because of all those different things. Now, those guys might not care about it. Tim Duncan may prefer to do that. Manu Ginobili may prefer to do that rather than going back to Argentina or whatever the case may be. That may very well be the case. But we're talking about comparing their game now to what they once were. That's all we're saying. Of course they could be on the team. Of course they could play and contribute to the San Antonio Spurs in some capacity over the next couple of years or so. That much is a given. This is a franchise that since the day that Tim Duncan has arrived, the only season in all of his years in the NBA, 19 plus, where he has won less than 50 games in a season was one year. And that was when the lockout shortened season had only 50 games in a year. And he won 37. They won 37 and 13. The lowest percentage this man has ever won in games in season. The lowest that he has ever suffered was winning 64% of his games in his career. This is a level of sustained excellence that cannot be disputed. So we all know what Tim Duncan and Manu Ginobili means to the game and means to the Spurs. We're just saying what they once were is over it's no more. Okay. That's all we're saying. Okay, I, I got you, but but my point is, if they can't play, you, you can't keep them on the roster. You, you see, like, if they can't well, contribute Well, I'm not saying they all, can't play. You, what, but but uh, I'm not saying they can't play. They just can't be who they once were. But Tim Duncan at 50%. Is better than a lot of people. Agreed. Manu Ginobili at fifty percent is better than a lot of people, but they're fifty percent. Okay. Of what they were. Okay, but but you started off the show saying that right before your eyes, it looked like the Thunder got old and slow and unathletic. I'm sorry, the Spurs got old and slow and unathletic. M my point to you is, it, it, it's up to R.C. Buford to sit back and make some cold-blooded, tough decisions. If if you need to fill those roster spots with younger, more explosive, athletic players, you, you need to start to move forward. I don't think you do. I think they can contribute at a fairly high level again next year. I told you to start the show. My biggest fear as a Spurs supporter is the point guard, who's much younger by their standards, which Tony, 33, maybe 34. But, but Tony Parker looked like he was starting to lose his flash and dash, his quickness. And once he does, that's a more athletic position than what the other two play. The other two can get by on guts and guile. They can make things happen on guts and guile. Tony Parker can't. 
You can either out quick people and get in the lane, or you cannot. And when you can't, the Spurs start to look old and slow because there's no electricity from the point guard position that Russell Westbrook and Steph Curry generate. I think, yeah, I think you're right about that, but the flip side to it, Skip, is that you can, you, of course they can go out there and be formidable for the regular season, but this is what Father Time does for you. When it knocks on your door, it knocks at your door, on your door at the worst time. So what you do between November and April is nice, fine, good, and dandy, but in the end, the objective is a championship. Yep. And when you have age-old bodies representing you, they're going to run out of gas. And that ultimately is what we're talking about when we're talking about father time, attrition, etc. Now, you point to the knees and the health of Tim Duncan. Well, Kobe Bryant had injuries. That's what led to this season being what it was because all the effort was expended him getting back healthy enough where he could get on the court. Yep. So, yeah, he got on the court, but how much did he have left? Because he had to get there. Well, it's the same principle with a Tim Duncan or anybody else. Yep. That's what we're talking about here. We'll be good, but are you going to win a championship? Not with that. Yep. You got to get younger. But they can play a role. I got you. They're just not what they used you. to be. Last quick point. Maybe complete pie in the sky, but there's a lot of buzz in San Antonio about this organization trying to position itself to lure Kevin Durant to San Antonio this summer. Again, seems, seems a little far-fetched to me, but I thought LaMarcus Aldridge was far-fetched last summer, and he wound up in San Antonio. They would have to do some roster maneuvering. They'd have to trade some people, cut some people to pull this off. But I can tell you that I think it's... It's got some legs to I, I think there's been discussion within the organization that they will shoot for that. Whether Kevin Durant would do it, I have no idea. I don't, I don't think he would, and, and, and I'll be honest with you. He should be ashamed of himself as he, if he did. Why would you, you just beat them in the Western Conference semifinals? Why are you departing from Russell Westbrook to join that? Why do you need to do that? Well, if you it, just like the other way, if you uh, lose to Golden State and they end up winning yeah, the championship for two years in a row, why join a two-time champion? They won without you. What the hell they need no, you for? I, I, you I got you. Go you can argue else. that last night they lost more than the series. Maybe they lost mm. Kevin Durant or any chance of getting Kevin Durant because they lost to mm. Kevin Durant. Maybe. I don't we'll know see. if that was ever a possibility. That's just me. Tony Parker, by the way, his birthday in a couple days. He's 34, May 17th, and the so average age of the team well, is 31 nice. and a half. Yeah, that's nice. It ain't going to be a happy birthday. I mean, you can say happy birthday, but it ain't going to be a happy one. Happy birthday, Tony. All right. Greg Hardy mm -hmm. is working on his off-the-field issues to try to get back on the field. Does he deserve another chance? Skip and Stephen A. will give you their thoughts on this subject.